Let's look at another example of calculating the derivative of a function using the limit definition. Here, let's consider the function f of x is equal to the square root of x. And we want to calculate, in general, what is f prime of x? What is the derivative of f at any given point x? And so to do this, we'll calculate the limit as h goes to 0 of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. This comes out to be f of x plus h is plugging in the x plus h, so that would just be the square root of x plus h, minus f of x is just the square root of x all over h. But now it seems like we're in trouble, because if we take this limit as h goes to 0, we'd be dividing by 0 on bottom. And also, in fact, divide by 0 on top, because as h goes to 0, you'd have just the square root of x minus the square root of x, so you have 0 over 0. This is a flag that there should be some kind of sneaky algebra attack that we can do on this problem in order to get rid of the predicament of dividing by 0. Well, as we have a square root of something minus the square root of something, we want to square those terms to get rid of it. So we're going to use the algebraic fact that a squared minus b squared is just a minus b times a plus b. In particular, to get rid of these square roots and to square them, we need to multiply the top by the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x because then it will be of the form a minus b times a plus b. But since it's a fraction, you can't divide the top without also, um, you can't multiply something on top without also multiplying the bottom by that. So we multiply the top and bottom by the same thing. Okay, what does this give us? We now have the limit as h goes to 0. On top, it will be x plus h square rooted squared, so it's just x plus h, the square root squared cancels, minus the square root of x squared, which is just an x, all over h times the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. Notice we still have that h on bottom, so it would still be divided by 0, so we need to do a little bit more work. But the x minus x here cancel, leaving you with just an h on top. And then that h on top can cancel with the h on bottom, leaving you with just 1 on top, and on bottom, the square root of x plus h plus the square root of x. And now this is a limit that we can do something with, because as h goes to 0, letting this h go to 0, you still have well-defined, it's, it's, no, it's not 0 on bottom, this is just going to be 1 over 2 square roots of x. Or I suppose you could write that if you want to clean it up a little bit. You can multiply the top and bottom by the square root of x. Just to make it more presentable, it will be the square root of x over 2x. But I'm happy with just leaving it as 1 over 2 square roots of x. What is this telling you graphically? Well, if we were to go ahead and sketch a graph of the square root of x, look something, something like this. Notice, this is not defined when x equals 0. It's not defined here at 0. That makes sense, because it's only defined on one side. So we're only going to be looking at this for positive values of x. It's only going to be defined for x being positive. It's the only place where this function makes sense to look at its tangent lines. But then if you pick any, any positive place on here, so for instance, let's, let's pick 1, and you plug 1 into this formula, you get, well, f prime at 1 is just 1 over 2 times the square root of 1, that's just 1 half, which agrees with the fact that the tangent line here has slope 1 half. What if we jump further out? Let's jump out a few, 1, 2, 3, let's move out to 4. What's going on at 4? Well, let's plug in 4 for my derivative, f prime of 4. 1 divided by 2 times the square root of 4, that's 1 fourth which agrees with the fact that here I have tangent line with slope 1 fourth. And as you continue to move further to the right, the tangent line is getting flatter and flatter and flatter because these numbers are getting smaller and smaller as you plug in bigger and bigger x's. Okay, 
So there we have it. We can calculate the derivative in general. Notice when you calculate it in general, what you get out is a function. This is going to give you a function. Infinitely many outputs for infinitely many different inputs. Whereas each of these are, are particular values. These are, these are numbers. These are particular values for the particular slope of the tangent line at particular points. And, and we have this nice, uh, this nice graphical interpretation of what is going on with the derivative.